welcome to the Toffee Blues, where Dave, Terry and I are going to discuss our transfer priorities. Of course, at this stage, we can't say when the next window will be, but when it does open, Everton will no doubt want to continue the rebuilding job that's needed here, and we will want to strengthen a few areas. Now, the financial impact of the coronavirus crisis and the lockdown may mean the pair strings need to be tightened a bit, and there may be less new arrivals than we might desire. So the question we're posing in this show is, if we have to restrict our transfers to just the one or two in the summer, which positions do we place as the highest priority? We'll start with the Falcon Blue Zone. Dave, where do you think needs to be strengthened the most in Everton's first 11 right now? Centre-back. Centre-back? I think, I, think, I, think, I think for me, you, know, you, know, you look at the progress of Mason Holgate and how well he's done. You know, he, he did have a... He had, he had a spell under the uh, under Cumin and under it was under Cumin, wasn't it? Where he was playing at right back, played quite well, struggled. You know, he was in and out a little bit, and you know, you you look at you look at the lad and you go, he's not a right back, he's a centre half, and you, you, as I said, you see the progress that he's made, and it's like that's what he was bought to do. You know, you look at him and John Stones with the two, I don't know, something in the water in Barnsley or something that do, does something to centre half, but the pair of them are just absolutely fantastic centre half. I know John Stones is struggling as of late, you know, in that city side and not getting much of a game, but you you know he's capable of doing something. And I think Mason Holgate has finally stepped up himself and gone, right, this is my chance to be the centre half at Everton and to prove that I can actually compete in this Premier League. Playing alongside Yeri Mina has been, you know, Mina, Mina struggled as well and then has flourished and then has, has gone on and you know he's had his injuries which we all know of um, when he ke- first came in and then you look at Michael Keane and you think they, where does the missing or where's the the weak link and I think it's Michael Keane for me and I don't think he's he stepped up to what he, he could have been as well I think you know when we got him from uh, Burnley it was like fucking hell we're paying 25 million for Michael Keane United's a Keane on him Keane sorry um and it's like, well, where where was this Michael? What what what's happened to the Michael Keane of playing alongside Ben Mee, as of that at Burnley, to what we've got now? And it just seems like he's gone back so much in his career, not in his career, but you know, in the way he's playing lately, that he he, he is down the pecking order at Everton. So for me, I you know, a, a centre half is my first and foremost because you know, defence wins games. We, you know, the defense wins a game every time. Doesn't matter. You know, to me, I, 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 I'm a defender to play right back, and I'm I will run and run and run, but I'll work hard for you know defensively. And I think that's what we need. Just someone else, just in that in that defense, a bit like in the Jagielka mold, bit of pace, bit of guile. You know, talking, uh, plenty of shouting. Uh, we we've just lacked that I think for a while. And I think a sense sense of half is something that we need first and foremost. Then maybe move into maybe looking at like the centre midfields and stuff like that. But for me at the moment, centre back definitely. Uh, any recommendations? If we had to pick anybody, who would you go with in that centre half role? If you had to name off the I, top of your head, I think for someone and and I'll probably get shot down for this, but just someone who knows the league, someone like Chris Smalling. Do you know what I mean? You know, go, I'm not sure how well that will go down. That, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to get hung. I'm going to get hung out to dry on this one. But I no. But it's it's a player who knows the league, understands you know what it's like to win with United and stuff like that, and is now doing well over at Roma. It's like well, hang on. He, he he knows the league. He he just slot in straight away, even if it's that just you know an eighteen month gap where it's like okay, let's solidify the cent the the centre backs, and then you have got you know Luca Dean fully fit. And you've got, you know, either John Joe Kenny, Seamus Coleman, whoever that might be at right back. And you've got a choice then of, you know, Keane, uh, Smallen, you've got uh, Yeni Mina, and you've got Mason Holgate. Zombies trying to get in the door. Um, and, you know, it's just just having more than three centre backs and having the choice of, you know, you can rotate it, you can play two at a time at any time you want. And you know, smaller maybe. And if the money's there, then you know it, it looks like I'd you know it'd be suggesting someone like Kula Bali from Napoli because of Ancelotti's, you know, it, it, Ancelotti's tenure at Napoli. If you're going, all right, well, let's go and get him instead because you know he's he's a fantastic player. And the money's there, let's do it. But you know, I think Smallen is one of those players who can just 
fit into that mold quickly and solidify the solidify the defence where we need to. But I'm probably going to get hung out to dry for that one anyway. I mean, it's I'll be honest, it's not one I'd agree with personally. But Terry, what about you? What, what position would you strengthen? Um, I was thinking about this before we came on. It, it's a hard one because there's like a lot of in an ideal world we need. You know, we'd like to improve about five positions. Like, let's be honest, you know, centre-back, centre-midfield, right-back. Um, I do think, though, that it probably is a reality that, you know, we might see no transfers even, you know, given the the uncertainty of, of finances with the, you know, with COVID-19. And, you know, we've posted massive losses, haven't we? And, and you know, we've, we've still got a lot of professionals on the books, you know, who are taking a wage, you know, like, even ones you forgot about, like you know Matthew Pennington and players like that, and you know there's the obvious ones like Sandro and Balassi, and you know obviously a lot of these players are going to end up going um, on free transfers, like Nias Martina, probably Mo Bezic and so on. But I think it might be prudent for a summer or a, a spell where you just sort of you know try and save money rather than spend it. But if we were to bring in a player in one position, I'd go for right midfield. Now it's a it's. Mm. It's a strange one, that, because I think the most urgent place in the team that needs improvement is centre midfield, like, yeah. on a first-team basis. But I've, I've done it by basically talking up what players we've got in each position and seeing, you know, what the strength and depth is there. Now, we do need improvement at right-back, but we we have got, in where, you know, if in a doomsday scenario, we've already got Kenny and Coleman. Would we like better? Yeah, probably, but we've got to. We've got centre backs. We've got centre midfielders. We've still got a centre midfielder. We barely used. Like for example, there's nothing to say that Gabamon doesn't come back in. At, you know when his injury is completely healed up, and then he, he forms a partnership with Andre Gomez, and then we're all right from there. Like obviously, I don't think the depth's very good. You know, Delph and Schneider and Sigurdsson, but there are players in. There's there's groups of players there. But as Walcott, I don't think Walcott is that good in the first place but he's certainly the first you know first choice on the right and then after that what have you got it won't also, be and he's... I don't think Walcott is suited to a right mid position in a four four two either he's not he's never been a good crosser of the ball to put the service in for strikers which you kind of need from your wide players in a four four two. yeah well this is the thing in, in Carlos four four two, basically the right midfielder is like the third attacker, whereas the left midfielder is like the, the number 10 he tucks in. And like, you know, yet there's loads of positions where, you know, the quality isn't quite up to like, you know, top six standards, but we've got players who can play those positions who are passable. You know, we Kenny and Coleman, you've got Wobie and, and Bernard. And whereas on the right, you've got Walcott and then nobody, uh, maybe a Wobie and he's terrible on that side. And I think if you really want, if you were going to improve the team immediately, with one position, if you'd only bought one, I think the money you probably be best spent on that right midfield to make that third attacker alongside your other two best players, which is um, Calvert Lewin and Richarlison, because the left hand side, it's going to be Dean, isn't it, with a tucked in playmaker? And Walcott has, look at the goal against Norwich away, not Norwich, sorry, my mistake, um, Watford away, the last minute winner. It literally goes. Richarlison, Keane, who just come on, and then Walcott, the, the three pronged attack of the two strikers and the right midfield. And I would like to see an improvement in that position. Obviously, there's other positions as well, but if you'd only made one, I think that's the most crucial one. Get that third man in the in the attacking trio with Calvert Lewin and Richarlison. I think that makes us that make us really potent. That's a really good idea, and. Obviously, there's so many names out there. Who would you go for if you are, like, obviously a realistic one, but if you had a choice, a right mid addition for the team? I mean, I don't know about realistic because of prices and, you know, what have you, but I I like David uh, He's He might not have the work rate for this league. It's it got to be said. He, you know, he's... Uh, I, we When we were linked with him, I, you know, I've started watching him and, you know, watched him in the Ajax's run last season. He's not, you know, he's... He's not Richarlison. He's not, he's not a grafter, is he? No, he's not. He's but I, I do like him. I think he, I think he would be a good fit 
in that you know three man attack type thing that you know with the two strikers. There's obviously other names we've been linked with, you know, like Chengis Under and all that, but I can't really speak to them because I've not I've got to be honest, I've not watched them. But um, yeah, I like David Neres. I think you know he would be a good addition, but it just depends as well. He, you know, last time we were linked with him, it was it was a lot of agent talk, obviously, but it was forty million pound moves and what have you. Like, you know that'll come down now as everyone starts to look to you know it, you know you know sell players to recoup some money after the crisis. But I don't know, David Neres. Is it interesting one? Obviously, I think we speak about a lot of these wingers that were linked with a lot of them don't seem to have played in a 4-4-2 system and it's it's always interesting to see how players can adapt is there any the, the one that always stands out for me I mean again it might might not be the big name of a Neres or anybody but obviously this is a shout out to our own Ben Crawford here and Dwight McNeil I, th- I, I <laughs> think because he's played in a 4-4-2 and I'm not saying he's the best option, like ability wise or anything, but I'm just thinking to fit the system. Or is is the best way to go about it to fit the system or to bring in a better player and tailor the system to him? I mean, I don't know. It, it could, this transfer window, when it does happen, is going to be a strange one because some clubs will really, really do well out of it, you know, because. Or majority of other clubs are going to be looking to sell at reduced rates to just get their their books in order. Now Everton, I don't see on the face of it as being one of those clubs who are going to go right. We're going to go and spend loads of money, you know, because we've, as I said before, had a lot of losses and, and what have you, and we're you know put looking unhealthy and financial fair play. But there's nothing to say that the financial fair play doesn't get relaxed and then uh, you know Uzbek, you know. You know, sugar daddy doesn't like go right. Well, we're going to sort this out. Is, this is the moment to seize the opportunity, really. It might be pie in the sky stuff. It might be, you know, you're joking on you. It doesn't work like that. But if we were to suddenly get our ducks in a row financially and FFP was to be relaxed, we'd be out there. We, you know, we wouldn't be, we could feasibly go out and get a few players and knock down prices. You know, like players like Ibrahim Sangari's been linked and he's going to be going for a lot less than he would have done because Toulouse have just been relegated and there'd be clubs especially in Holland and the likes of that, the smaller leagues who are going to go, right, we need to sell we these players now. We need, we need to get the, the... But on the other hand, you know, we we might be one of those clubs as well who go, we need to sell, we don't need to buy. So it just depends. If you if you manage to get... If you're cash rich, you can do really well out of this market. But if you're not, which currently we are not, it might be a time to just like, you know, be a bit more, be a bit more frugal and just tighten the belt and come back next time and try again. I think it'd just be interesting to see what happens with the free tra- with the with the players who are out of contract with Everton as well. You know, I mean, obviously, one of the things we were particularly looking looking at earlier in the or you know, in, you know, January February was like, well, hang on, Nias is out of contract, Sandro's coming out of contract, Balassi's coming out of contract. There's you know, three hundred grand's worth of wages being freed up a week. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, well, hang, hang on, we've actually got the money to spend it, and now all of a sudden we're you know, every the world's gone upside down. It's like, well, do we have do we look to keep these players because we can't get the players that players in that we want and utilize them? I think you know, it, it, to be honest, Dave, I think I've got my own answer to that question. Uh absolutely not. It it, it, it is no it's a resounding no, of course no, it is, but I'd rather see some of the kids have a go than even think of hanging on to those kind of players on those kind of salaries. Yeah. It's just financial suicide, especially given the circumstances Teddy says about. Mm. Well, we can assume safely that all the players who are out of contract, like Martina and Nias and, and you know who have you, they're going to be released. But there's quite a lot who are going into there last year. And I think a big thing in this market will probably be loans as well. So even though that's what we've been doing anyway, by loaning out these Deadwood players until their contracts expire just to get some of their wages at least off the books. I certainly can't see, you know, in an ideal world, the likes of Balassi coming back in and having a, you know, or we get a fresh go at Everton with one year on his contract at his age. I, don't, I just don't see it. He, you know, happened. we need to, No, even under these circumstances, I think we'd just rather do without. But I, I do think that 
all the players who are out of contract will just be released and all the players with one year on their contract will be available to loan. And that might be the case for incomings as well. It could be mm. a case of you see more two-year loans, you see um, cases of players who you'd be interested in. Not so much as many young players, like, for example, Gabriel. I couldn't see us gloaming him and then buying him next time when finances are all right. But we've been linked with James Rodriguez. And if we were to shed enough wages, I think he could... Very real. He could be a realistic shout for someone mm. to come in because but they're not going to sell him. Madrid and all these are clubs, they will need to sell as well and they're not going to get buyers for these players. But if they can get them on loan for the remainder of their contract, just like we might do with Balassi, they might, you know, obviously on a higher up the ladder scale, they might do take the same thing go, you know what? He's on 280 grand a week, but Everton are offering to do 180 of that. Go on. Off you go because we it's saving us money, and it could be a case of that just all the way around the leagues, apart from particularly cash rich clubs like the Man Uniteds. It's, it's an interesting take. If James Rodriguez was to come in, could he be the answer at right mid as an inverted winger? No, that's all right. It just, he doesn't play right midfield, does he? he play he plays um, number ten, doesn't he? I mean, maybe in a four four two, you know, like. He might find a place, but I, I don't. I, I, He's basically Sigurdsson's replacement, isn't he? He's that kind of player. Or maybe he'd go into that Bernard's. It will be inside left role where he's sort of like he's out wide nominally, but he's cutting in with a full back going past them. Like I couldn't see him being the third. You know, uh, you know the right hand side. The right hand side's like a wide player who goes up high and wide, pace, isn't it? Possibly. Yeah, I think you'd have to find um, a buyer. For one of the other players, like like a Sigurdsson, like an a uh, well, a Bernard or an Awobi, which you know is probably not going to be popular anyway, um, to get Rodriguez in. So, I mean, he could come in, but I just don't think we'll be able to shift out players he'd replace. I think we just have another piece of Deadwood, like a Sigurdsson, who, who would, you know, I'd be happy to see him stop playing, but he's not going to go anywhere, is he? Well, that's it, yeah. I'm I'm not too sure there's too much in the Hammers Rodriguez links, given that he's not like I say he's, his preferred position's a number ten, and we don't really have an out and out number ten in this new system. Is it really worth ex- like sort of that kind of expenditure on a player who doesn't fit the system? No, maybe not. But he was he was really just an example of potential moves that clubs will make of loans for players who they can't sell but they want rid of. We're going to do it, I'm sure. And I'm sure other clubs will. To be, I saw the thing today. I don't think we'd be shopping in this market. But actually, after, after having said that, I think we actually probably will, given our record. But Barcelona have got about ten centre midfielders. They're going to be looking to loan them out. What do you think yeah, about like an Arturo Ar- Ar- Vidal or somebody like that? No, no one in particular. But I said I don't think we'll do it because there's no one who fits what we need. But I, and then I thought we love buying players from Barcelona. Why would we not be looking at that? <laughs> yeah, that's but a good point. There's there's loads of clubs like that who are like us who stockpile players who, who, and half of them don't get a kick on the ball. Now, you know, one man's you know you know rubbish is another man's treasure. So we we might look at another club's Schneiderlin and he might be well better than than what we've currently got. You know what I mean? So, yeah, to, to finalise your decision, it would be a David Neres. That would be your one. Yeah, we, we went a bit off point, a little bit off point there. But, yeah, in, 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 <laughs> yeah in, I just realised that. In this scenario, yes, it, it, you know, given the qualifiers have stated about depth and, you know, bodies and whatnot, I'd go for a right-hand side player who can join up with the strikers. And David Neres would be my pick. Um, there's other players, but I like him the most because I've seen him the most. Fair play. I think for me personally, I think you guys said name most of the positions, didn't you? Like obviously, Dave, you said centre back for your sign, and obviously right mid. I'd probably go with the the central midfield. I just think we're so threadbare in that position at the moment. And I think we, we were talking in the Silver Show earlier, weren't we, about how you can't do the job if you don't have the personnel. And obviously, Bannon's returning to fitness but we could use another kind of workhorse in the middle of that midfield to help us win the sort of physical duels. I feel like we're so we're so pathetic sometimes. Everton in the centre of the midfield, we're in the big like 50-50s, and that can sort of help us gain more possession and maybe have a bit more of an impact on the game. I just think we need another 
if you're like a water carrier, as Eric Cantona once put it about Didier Deschamps, I think we need that sort of player, a player who can put throw his weight around in the middle of the park and win the ball back. Maybe in Ibrahim Sangare, as you said before, Terry, I think that that's the kind of player we need to add in that midfield, someone who can really throw his weight around. Well, I guess we don't really know anything about Gabamon as well. I mean, we've, we've literally seen about 75 minutes of him. And, you know, yeah. he, when he came on a palace, he, he struggled. You know, obviously, the first game in, he was brought on um, for an injury. And it was like, well, we, we don't know enough about him to think, well, actually, that, you know, is he a just a game's replacement, the player that we wanted, you know, that, that, we've, that we're crying out for, really, like you say, with the water carrier, which was literally a just a game. You know the lads would run and run and run and just do all the all the all the dog work, and you know leave it to you know the likes of Gomez or you know to a lesser extent Schneiderlin to do what what's needed. Is Gabamon that kind of player? So yeah, even then a centre midfield, it it, it we need you know, that kind of player. Yeah, and we haven't yeah, had that I mean, so no. For all we know, like Gabamon could not be suitable for a four four two either. He could be like we we've got about 10 centre midfielders, but they all seem to only be able to play in a three or only suitable, and you know, they're not in a good fit in a two. I mean, centre midfield is our most urgent position quality-wise. I definitely agree with that. I just based it on numbers, though. We've got about 10 centre mids and one right midfielder, but in terms of where would improve this team the most if you brought in a new player, it's definitely centre midfield. So we, who have we got linked with them? Alan? From, um, Alan, that would be an interesting one, I think. Depending on the whole wage and transfer situation, like you say, I think he'd be a good addition. Even at, you know, I think he's getting on for thirty, but so was Idrissa Gay, and he was doing a very good job of it. So why not mm. if, on on a loan? If it, like you say, if Napoli sanctioned something like that, possibly. But I wouldn't be throwing the whole like checkbook at him. I don't think he's worth that kind of money. No, certainly not. I mean. Kid. I mean, it's it's difficult, isn't it? I mean, nobody knows like what the situation's going to be. I mean, not everyone assumes it's going to be worse than it was. Which how could it not be? But it, you know, it, it's just how all the clubs are set up and how they're going to how they're going to handle it. If there's if any Premier League club can come out of this stable, they're going to have their pick of a lot of players. Like you know, who have reduced fees and from lesser leagues just so they can keep them afloat. And it's only even I, I'm I'm talking like you know players who probably would have cost 30, 40 million before this are probably going to be going for like fifteen twenty now and it, but but is fifteen twenty going to be a prohibitive price because it will go back up you know when things settle back down the, the the inflation will go back up again it's just going to have one summer where if you get it right you're going to literally make up you know a lot of yards on the on the competition it's just hope the way one of them who can pull it off. It's going to be one of them. I think we do need to have a look around, certainly for some bargains. When, I, like I say, we don't even know when the next window is going to be. I keep saying the summer, but will it be the summer? When will the next transfer window be? Obviously, it's such an odd time. We don't know when they're going to sort of whether they move the goalpost in that respect. It, it's awkward, isn't it? I mean, you're hearing, you're hearing stuff saying that oh, they want to resume back in June and stuff like that. Or you know, as, as, as we're talking about before, um, before we come on air, like playing in Australia, or something like this, like nine thousand miles away, and you know, you you can't even go to a funeral at the moment. Do you know what I mean? And you, you're it's talking absurd, about isn't it? you're talking about shipping people nine thousand miles to go and play in Australia, uprooting families again, air, air travel. You're taking coaches, you're taking the the playing staff, you're taking the coaching staff, physios, doctors, and it's just a farce. It's just one thing after another that you just hear and you think, what the hell are you thinking? But the truth of the matter is, we've got these other leagues, the Netherlands, France have cancelled their leagues. Whether or not they award the title, that's a completely different debate altogether. But why shouldn't we? That's it, precisely. It's complete money grab and exercise. And, you know, it's when the media are pushing it as well. Like soft shite Ollie Holt yesterday. Oh, for goodness sake. We, we have to discuss that a little bit before we finish. The... You know, you, you looked at that and you're going, it must be Everton and United fans. Uh, so uh, does that mean Everton and United fans are the only ones with an actual working brain of what's going on at the moment? 
Do you know what I mean? It's like um, we probably are, we probably do sound the most vocal because yeah, it's it's our fiercest rival. Revival. But you know, I'm, I'm sure if you spoke to someone, that, you know, a Bournemouth fan or a Norwich fan, it's like well, we've got other priorities. You know, Norwich are fighting relegation. It's like, well, actually, you know, avoid the league and we're staying in. Never mind the void the league side of things, just the whole carrying the season on. I think, any, yeah. I think somebody actually replied to this on that that tweet that he put out. And you speak to anyone, regardless, of, even a Liverpool supporter who works in a hospital, and they'll mm. like to differ. Yeah, and it's, I, th- I think a lot of it was just it was a lot of clickbait and everything. But at the same time, you just think, who's coming up with these ideas? And he, <laughs> he lost his points per game idea, which I don't. Get one bit, no. to be honest with you. I think it's just I don't see how it's that's just that's just to sort out the games that are in hand. That it'll basically be the table now, but it'll affect the play the other teams who haven't played and um you know, I think everyone else is on twenty eight and we're on and so most teams are on twenty eight games and some are on twenty seven. I think the points per game just sorts them out and then after that everyone is the same. So it's basically the, the league table. Maybe Aston Villa stay up. That's about it. Yeah, and it affects like five it, of the top six. It affects it affects majority of um. Well, it affects all the teams who've got a game in hand, but everyone else is practically the same positions. We'd be twelfth still. I don't know. It's yeah. I mean, just on Ollie Holt, I blocked that idiot ages ago. I just don't, <laughs> don't want to see what he has to say. He's the notorious. The absolute state of that, though. I mean, again, it's a case of. A real lack of self awareness, I think, of obviously what what the priorities are. Obviously, this show is about priorities, and we need to like basically put it straight that the priority is to get through this as unscathed as we can. I think like, someone said something to him today, though, as well, because he's come out with a tweet saying, "How can you play?" You know, when it's a contact sport and stuff like this. Like, well, hang on, said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, have, a, have a look. I, I don't know the exact tweet, but it was basically coming out saying. Oh well, it's a con. You know, how can you do this when there's contact with players? You know, the sweat and all this is like we've been trying to we've been trying to tell you this fucking weeks, mate, and you you just kind of take it in. Someone someone replied to the news story of like the women's team not wanting to carry the season on uh, Liverpool's women's team, and someone replied saying they must be all blues or manks in that Liverpool women's team. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> well, well, obviously, you, you do see some people's true colours when all this comes out, don't you? You, you see, like, mm. what? Well, obviously, I'm not even sure if Oli Alt's pushing for Liverpool to win the league. Is it? A, it may well be, like you say, it might be a money situation. Obviously, we've heard a lot of rumours about papers struggling financially as well, and he works for a paper, so you know there mm. could be a different kind of agenda that he's pushing. But one way or another, it's not the right agenda to be pushing. Not at this moment in time, anyway. No. Yeah, we went a little bit off topic there, but of course, on the note <laughs> of priorities, it was worth remembering that what the priority is to stay safe, basically, and basically come out of this as well as we possibly can. And obviously, moving forward, that is the end of this transfer discussion. Obviously, we've looked over a lot of different positions, a lot of different players. If you're watching on YouTube, drop us a comment on the video and let us know where you want us to strengthen the most. And Maybe suggest a few players as well who you think we should try and bring in as well. Give us a like and a subscribe as well. And thank you guys for watching on the Toffee Blues.